Hey, Mustard, do you know why I'm Australia's favourite sauce? Your modesty. No, it's because I'm full of flavour. Mm, you're full of something. What was it? No, oh, nothing. Sausage! Wondering how to clean away stubborn grease residue? Look no further than SpotGo, a surface and barbecue degreaser that guarantees a high-quality clean SpotGo, available in all Woolworths and Coles. Look for it in the barbecue products aisle. Conveyor Services, delivering the right people to the right places. Good evening and welcome to another episode of Mariners TV. I'm Carly Carmichael, joined here by Peter Pryor. How's it going? It's great to be back. It Loving is. Loving it. It is. It feels like we've had about 50,000 games of football between <laughs> the last episode and now. It's only been three, but it has been just Action an absolute packed, manic. It? Yeah. It's been a lot of things to chat about this week, but um, yeah, we've got a lot of th really, really fun things coming up. Um, and yeah, well, let's kick it off. Pete, what's coming up? Of course, we'll be checking out the highlights from our FFA Cup win against Wollongong. Uh, we'll see what's got Ange Postacoglu so happy in our new Mariners Around the World segment. We'll check out what Marvin's been up to as well as we look ahead to our match against Sydney FC and much, much more, Carly. There is so much to talk about. So, um, yeah, I guess let's let's head straight into it. The last few games we've been playing. So <laughs> we had um, Wellington, unfortunate um, to get the loss there. Um, Marco did score his first for the season. Yeah, yeah, yep. just nipped Which in and uh, picked up on a defensive error. Good finish as well. Took it very well. Yep, and uh, we also had the game against MacArthur. Again, an unfortunate result, but so much to talk about from there, you know, we had Yaron Sosa had to step in. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he got injured. Then we brought in um, Caruso as well. What an opportunity for the 17-year-old. And didn't he uh, give a really good account of himself he, on the night? He really did. And, like, you look back and what were you doing at 17? <laughs> Definitely not playing for not a playing professional top sporting football. club. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I guess the match to really chat about, the FFA Cup win. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How good. Coming back from 1-0 down is always... Always so exciting, especially in knockout cup football. It was Matthias Maresh mm. who opened the scoring on the evening, stealing in at the back stick and tapping home before our favourite Harry McCarthy. Are you going to do it for us? <laughs> We've probably heard him say McCarthy enough it's, these it's, days. Yeah, I've done it once or twice. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, game started off the first real flashpoint of that one there. Mark Birgitti getting sent off in the 20th or 25th minute there. Yeah, that was um, definitely a turning point. But, you know, and one of those things is, you know, a lot of people saying what's actually been happening on the field. And then, mm. you know, thankfully only a one card, uh, sorry, one match suspension. Mm -hmm. um, so he will be back against Sydney this week. But um, Excellent. yeah, very, very interesting to see a lot of people's different opinions on that. There were a lot of opinions. And I guess, you know, football's a game of opinions, isn't it really? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> very politically there. Um, and um, so FA Cup, that takes us to the quarterfinal, mm -hmm. which will be happening on the 21st of December at Leichhardt Oval right. against Arpia. Up your like card on the Tuesday night. They love some midweek cup. Yes, football, it's going to be great. So I'm sure um, ticketing information will be available shortly. Would be so fantastic to see so many Mariners fans down there and mm. hopefully, um, yeah, one step further to uh, winning the cup. Let's do it. Yep. Beautiful. <laughs> well, let's check out the highlights from that FFA Cup game against the Wollongong Wolves. To take. 
Goes back post. Oh, they're queuing up the header, and it's a good stop. I think it was Tsikenis. Ball comes in. Oh, it's a good ball as well. And there's a solid hit. And Bittergetti just lets him know about it. Has the referee seen something there? The linesman has. The referee is heading in, and it's red. Lockie Scott steps up and scores. And he does the Cristiano Ronaldo goal celebration. Hatcher's ball is a good one. Oh, and Jacob Farrell could have had a goal there. Just a minute before half-time, the Mariners could so easily have been level. Said they hadn't pushed them too hard. They had everyone fit and ready to go. As Here's Moresh. Oh, what a piece of defending. Fantastic goal line clearance to deny Urenia. Toying with McDonald. Urenia leaves it well for Goddard. Chip back post. Nisbet for Urenia again. And this time, Moresh. And this time they do have their equaliser. And it's the Brazilian, Mateus Moraes. And as you say, we head straight up the other end. It's a good ball for Arrenia. The keeper's come for it. He hasn't got there. And it's been cleared again off the line. Fantastic defending this time. It's Littler who cleared the ball. Wolf Den, the fans still finding their voices. Goddard, what an effort. And what a save from DeRose. Strong left-handed save to deny Goddard, who takes this, drives it in, and this time they have the goal. And I think it's the youngster who's just come on, McCarthy. As here goes McCarthy again. Oh, this could be trouble for Madden. It's a key red. It's a red card. Red. Oliver Bazanic, it is. Over the wall, and <laughs> saved again, and off the crossbar this time. Well, he can't get much closer. He's getting closer every time. But it's the Central Coast Mariners who march on to the quarterfinals. Watching back that highlight, those highlights, there are so many fantastic chances. Oh. Um, yeah, just the save from Goddard's effort. Ollie's off the crossbar as well in the yeah. dying minutes there. I did say Moresh tapped home. He really didn't tap home. He really home, did. Didn't he? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> a lashed more it home. Than that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so good to see some of our young players as well really stepping up. And, you know, that second half was just, like, beautiful, oh, yeah, beautiful football ran to over watch. Them, yeah. Especially if you're not really a football fan. That's sort of the kind of thing you want to see and it really suck you in. It draws you in. That's yep. right. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Well, we do have a new segment um, this week, Mariners Around the World. So we're going to be using it to keep an eye on some of the fan favourites from the club um, during their life after the Mariners. Of course, turning to Scotland. Firstly, let's have a look at this goal from Tommy Rogic as he glides past three or four defenders and strikes home. The first of three in Celtic's 3-0 win over Dundee United. Uh, Rogic has been out injured for a month or two. Uh, this is his first goal back and surely a sign of things to come. As we see, Ange very happy with the soccer talisman there. Carly, he makes it look so easy, doesn't he? I know, he? I know. Just a ball... He's got the ball on a string, really. It's almost like he's gone back to his futsal day. <laughs> and he's just sort of... <laughs> I think he's really brought in a few of, the, yeah, a few of those futsal skills there. And um, we see the, the slow-mo close-up here. Just gliding past defenders. What a finish. Turning to Spain, of course. Matt Ryan had his first appearance in the Copa del Rey, uh, where he kept a clean sheet in his team's 4-0 victory. Of course, playing for Real Sociedad this season. Having a look at a string of saves that he's pulling off here against Pulido. Oh, what a save as he turns out round the bar as well, Carly. <laughs> He's unstoppable. He's unbeatable. Yeah. <laughs> Looking over to the Netherlands, of course, as we check in on uh, Trent Sainsbury, who's now a regular starter at KV Kortrich. Uh, although he lost 2-0 in this game, it uh, looked like a pretty poorly maintained goal mouth, to be <laughs> fair. Uh, he has been putting in some very decent performances over there in the Netherlands. And, of course, we head to Norway to check in with Gianni Stensness, who has uh, ditched the peroxide. He's seen here in his side's 3-1 win against Ords BK. 
And uh, for those who are coming along on match day, make sure you grab a copy of The Loose Cannon. There is a fantastic interview with Gianni Stensness chatting about his move overseas and, um, yeah, what's been happening. So um, if you w don't get a copy of that, it will be available online at ccmariners.com.au after Sunday. So good to see those guys going well. Absolutely gangbusters overseas. I know Alo Kowal is still playing regularly for yep. Stuttgart under 23, scoring, I think, 7 in 18 uh, at last check. So, yeah, scoring goals are fun pretty much. Doing yeah. Doing pretty well. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's just hear from a few of our sponsors. And we are welcomed at the desk with Ken Shembury, the Central Coast Mariners head of football. Welcome, Uncle Ken. Hey, Carly. How are you doing? Hey, Pete. <laughs> hey, mate. How are you? Very well, thanks. Yeah. First chance we've had the uh, opportunity to catch up with you uh, this season on Mariners TV. Um, absolute thanks, pleasure to have you alongside us. Hey, great. Yeah, nice to be here. Well, we'll kick things off. First of all, do you have an update on Yaren Sozo um, and his injury? Yeah, uh, Yaren got injured uh, actually a little bit uh, the day before at training slightly, but aggravated it in uh, about the 20th minute of the MacArthur game and uh, has a pretty nasty hip flexor injury. Um, we've done an MRI to test whether one of the tendons may have come away from the bone and uh, we're just awaiting for a medical report, but it doesn't look good. It could be a bit of a long-term injury, we think. Mm. Unfortunate. Of mm. course, we wish Yaren all the very best in his uh, road to recovery there. Um, turning to the FA Cup, Ken, uh, we saw Arpia uh, going through progressing the other night against the Wanderers. Tight turnaround for the Mariners. Of course, we look ahead to uh, playing against Arpia on the 21st of December there. How do you think we're going to fare? Oh, look, we had a three-day turnaround for us. We play Wanderers on Saturday and then uh, back up three days later down at uh, Leichhardt Oval against uh, a very good RPA Leichhardt Tigers outfit. Um, Well-respected club in the National Premier League competition. So, uh, um, you know, they're not in the quarterfinal for making up numbers, right? So they're a good side, uh, good players. Um, Lots of boys been there quite a while in that squad. Uh, mm. uh, on, you know, I know Lukey Turnbull, Adrian Riccino, and used to love Franco Parisi, right? Franco's mm. still running around. <laughs> around forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and good, uh, great football, great skills, yeah. good players. So, yeah, look, um, we're looking forward to that. Obviously, we're going there to uh, to win where we're trying to get a bit of silverware, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm pretty keen to go down to Leichhardt and uh, try and progress. And um, so the squad we've got now, a lot of young ones um, who've come up via our academy. Yeah. What's the transition process been for them to sort of get them ready to, for first-team football? Oh, I think it's a, normal, it's a bit of a planning process. The boys in the academy, uh, you know, the ones that are there now, have been training with the first-team squad for a little while. And uh, we, you, we blood them, I guess is the way we'd like to call it, and uh, take our time in getting them ready. But... You know, the Harry Steels, Maxi Ballards, Dan Halls, etc., are all um, coming from that academy MPL background and are now uh, making their marks in the, in the A-League. You know, I, I fully expect uh, a couple of those boys to be starting on the weekend against Sydney FC. Absolutely. Yes. Speaking of the youth, how, uh, how is the academy shaping up ahead of the 2022 NPL season? Uh, yeah, well, the academy's obviously made up of uh, boys and girls program. Um, the girls' program is um, had a bit of a turnover of staff, and uh, looking, we've got some changes happening there. Um, we are looking to build a really uh, competitive first grade girls team, and we're looking to recruit at the moment. So we're trying to, we're taking our time filling that squad, looking to try and find those couple of extra 
profile girls that may make the team extremely competitive. Um, in the boys' pace, it's uh, it's business as usual. Um, you know, the next crop of youngsters to come through, uh, we're grooming. We've got a few there that uh, uh, we think are you know, progressing particularly well and you know, it wouldn't surprise me that by the end of the year there's one or two names that people haven't heard of that will probably, um, you know, we'll get some A-League time with it is what we're really aiming to do. Very good. So, yeah, that'd be great. And um, so you spoke about the senior women's um, really looking to sort of strengthen that side, especially yeah. looking towards a A-League women's side yeah. um, in the 22-23 season. But next year also start, sees the start of our girls' SAP program. Yep. Um, how are things coming along for that? Oh, terrific, actually. It was, um, I attended the girls' SAP trials last weekend and, uh, you know, um, really impressed with the number of young girls who turned out, which is uh, uh, good for us. It's been a bit of a difficult pathway um, originally to get there, but the number of girls that turned up uh, clearly indicated that we're going to um, fill our squads and have strong squads. And look, it's 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 the missing link in girls football. We need to get the girls younger to uh, be able to get ready for youth girls football, which starts at 14. So our SAP girls are 10, 11, 12, you know, age groups there, 13s as well. Um, and they play small-sided games, which is great. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll get that up and running this year and that'll give us the total program to, uh, uh, you know, an Australian Premier League team at the top of the tree, right? So that's what we want. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. And just finally, how are things uh, looking ahead of this weekend against Sydney? Yeah, like, you know, can't wait for Sydney, to be honest. It'd be <laughs> really good to get back home to the mm. stadium, you know. We've... Mm -hmm. uh, feel like I've been on the road all year. But, uh, we've had five games away in a row. We've been to Mudgee and Wollongong twice and, you know, Penrith last weekend. So um, really, really looking forward to get back to the stadium. Uh, look, we're playing, uh, you know, the, side mo the most respected team in the A-League for me. You know, they're right up there in terms of their professionalism structure. We're, um, we love that challenge. I think that's what we're really looking forward to playing, uh, that sort of team. Um We've, had a few, we've got a few injury problems. Uh, most people know that um, Maddie's had a pretty serious neck injury and um, he won't be available this week. But RT's close and uh, good news for us is uh, Nikolai Muller is, um, um, you know, might be a surprise uh, surprise debut with a bit of luck there if we can get Nikolai across the line. He's, um, he'll give us that little bit of experience and vision and knowledge and experience that we need in the front third of the park at the moment because team's playing well. We're just not scoring the goals that um, we should be. Mm. Um, had we taken our chances, uh, we might have had slightly different results in the last fortnight, I think. Um, we're not unhappy with the way we're playing, but we're not happy about the results. Yeah. So, so, yeah, Sunday's very important. Uh, we need a crowd to get out. We need support. You know, um, we need the Coasties to come along and uh, really support this team. We've got a big month. Four, four home games, right? So mm. defend December fest, here we come. <laughs> four wins would be nice. Yeah, it would be great. We'll take, we'll take 12 points and go to the top, top of the tree. I, I love hearing that song. We are top of the league. Is that what yeah. they sing? Yeah. Yep, yep. Anyway, Absolutely. That'd be a nice uh, New Year's Eve present, wouldn't it? Terrific. I reckon so. Yeah, no, looking forward to Sunday. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. No and, um, yeah, good luck to the boys this Sunday. Yep. Okay, then. Thanks very much. Thank you. See you soon. See you soon. And we'll just hear a few more words from our sponsors. Wondering how to clean away stubborn grease residue? Look no further than SpotGo. SpotGo, a surface and barbecue degreaser that guarantees a high quality clean every time. SpotGo, available in all Woolworths and Coles. Look for it in the barbecue products aisle.
Yes, that is the promo for our game against Sydney this Sunday. Really cannot wait. It feels like it's been forever since a home game. Yeah. And I am so excited. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We've travelled all around New South Wales over the last five weeks or so, and We're it's just so great to finally, be home. No finally coming like home. home. Exactly. I drove past the stadium earlier, and the pitch looks absolutely Yeah, they've like. done a great job. Mm -hmm. So really looking forward to that. Hope to see everyone there on Sunday. Tickets are on sale at ticketech.com.au. But I think what... We've all been waiting for, mm -hmm. we've got some new Marvin content. <laughs> I love Marvin <laughs> content so much. So I actually don't think you've seen this. I haven't. I have no so, idea what's coming. Um, I, I've seen bits and pieces of it. Haven't seen the full thing um, yet. So I'm very excited for it. Um, so yeah, are you ready? Roll the tape. Let's go. Good. <laughs> Got to take a minute to compose ourselves, I think, as, as we said. That's the first viewing uh, we've had of that one there, and um, that's some A-grade content. I'm surprised Marvin still has ankles left. <laughs> <laughs> The poise and balance that Marvin has, though, is oh, absolutely he is incredible. He is very graceful. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, again, yeah, I shouldn't be surprised. But, I um, understand that Marvin previously trained at Juilliard School of Dance. <laughs> yes. uh, so that could explain it, yeah. I do. Yes, that would <laughs> Okay. Um, so feel, feel free to um, let us know your feedback on the Marvin video in the comments below. You can also um, put in any questions you may have um, about you know, any players or anything coming up or anyone you'd like to see on the show as well. So make sure you pop those in. We did have someone ask, uh, will our jerseys be on sale on Sunday? And the answer is yes. You can get yourself one of these beautiful jerseys um, at our merchandise store on match day, just behind Bay 5. I can't get my words out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get too much out at once. Um, yeah, so they'll be on sale. And don't forget, if you're a Mariners member, bring along your membership card and you will get 10% off. So, And people who had actually pre-ordered, um, thank you so much for your patience. We do really appreciate it. You know, obviously, like Sean said last time, a lot of things out of our control when it comes to shipping. But they have arrived. They've been started to be posted out. So you should have them hopefully by the game on Sunday. It'd be great to see people in the stands wearing them. What's your favourite, home away or alternate? Uh, I can't go past yellow. Mm. Yellow is just, it's so traditional for me. Mm. And, um, yeah, I do love it. My, my little boy actually loves the white one. That's ah, his favourite. Yeah, so, yep. I think it's not really fitting because it's got all the, you know, obviously our academy players, academy all the players, junior yeah. players. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's really nice. That's right. It's a toss-up for me. It's 50-50 it's between the home or the away yeah. kit. I really love that away kit they're, so much. They're all great. <laughs> they're all perfect. And um, thanks to Paladin for those mm. as well. They've done a great job with them. Absolutely. Well, let's let's move ahead. This Sunday, another game of football. Another, <laughs> another game, of, game football. of football. Like we said, it's action-packed. <laughs> it has been uh, since the A-League kicked off just a few short weeks ago. And uh, 
finally at home. Yes, and as Ken mentioned before, December Fest. December Fest, um, we've got four games of football. There's three race days. There's a A-League women's match as well. Um, a Wellington Phoenix game is being held there. Um, we've got fireworks. Um, there's a carols. There is so much happening in December, all in Gosford. So if you want to find out more about the December Fest membership, that'll get you access to all of those events in December. Um, ccmariners.com.au. We've also got the carols. So carols on the coast, Friday the 17th of December at Central Coast Stadium. Um, Kirsty Lee Akers is headlining. Um, absolutely fantastic. And then a whole range of wonderful um, supporting acts there. Can't wait to take the family to that one. Mm -hmm. um, adults are $5. Kids are free. If you're a Central Coast Mariners member, also free. Um, and it then cost you, you not to. Exactly, exactly. So it's the perfect thing. Kicking off the school holidays too, I think. I think so. Yeah, yep. so um, make sure you get along to that, ccmariners.com.au for all the details. But then, so kicking off December Fest, Central Coast Mariners, Sydney FC. Yep, absolutely. Like we said, so great to be at home. Mm. We saw Sydney uh, play a pretty tough 120 minutes against MacArthur last night in the FFA Cup. Mm. So there might be some heavy legs out there uh, from the Sydney <laughs> contingent. Um, Carly, how do you think we're going to go this weekend? I've always got positive energy when it comes to <laughs> us playing vibes. against Sydney. Good I think, vibes. you know, we've always got those those historic moments where we've just had these, you know, fantastic wins and fantastic moments Great against battles. them. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Mm. Um, I'm predicting, uh, let's go, I always go 2-0, but I think it's, you know, we'll go 2-0 to the Mariners. Um, what about you? I'm thinking to kick off December Fest, we're going to have a goal fest. Oh, goal fest. 3-2 Mariners. Oh, love a goal fest. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. All right. Well, um, yeah, cool. So I've done it again. It's the same <laughs> thing as last week. I'm sorry, it's been a, you know. Um, but yeah, so make sure you get your tickets to that, ticketech.com.au. Um, I think. You can take the whole family for 50 bucks. Like that's... Bargain. Yeah. So yeah. make sure you get along or get yourself a December Fest membership. And um, yeah, as usual, big thank you to Jimmy and Emma from JC mm -hmm. who've um, put everything together for us. Thank you to Ken Shembury for jumping on and having a chat. Thank of you, course, Pete. A huge thank you to all the uh, Mariners fans who <laughs> yes. travelled all around the countryside over the last five or so it weeks. It has been so Mudgy, fantastic Newcastle, to see twice. our supporter buses have just been packed. Absolutely, yeah. And I've seen videos and everything from all the fans on the buses. Yeah. And oh, it's been great. It's, I've been on the party bus. I've, I've now, seen and... a few of your videos, so I know you've <laughs> been <laughs> enjoying yourself. <laughs> but no, it is so fantastic to see, and you know, we really hope that you know, that level of support we can see on Sunday when we take on Sydney. Bring your friends, bring your family, bring everyone, bring your neighbours, get down to Central Coast Stadium <laughs> this weekend. All right, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you in a fortnight. See you soon.